Let's talk about mistakes people make when they begin to sell on Amazon. The, the biggest, biggest mistakes, mistakes people, people make, make when, when they, they sell, sell on Amazon. Amazon. Okay, so if you're a beginner, you're probably overwhelmed all of the options, opportunity, and potential pitfalls that Amazon presents. Let's talk about what you should and shouldn't do to make sure your Amazon selling experience goes as good as possible. My name is Blake. I've been selling on Amazon in a professional capacity since 2016. So don't worry, I know the basics. And for everyone out there who's not a beginner, these are just guidelines. There are exceptions to every rule, but if you're a beginner, follow these rules, these tips, these guidelines, and you should be okay. Tip number one, rule number one, guideline number one, is do not sell popular products that are new without an invoice. And I can already hear people stampeding towards the keyboards to comment, oh, I sell it all the time, I love retail arbitrage, what are you talking about, Blake, you're an idiot. Well, like I said, these are just guidelines. Of course, as you become more and more advanced, you're gonna figure out when you can break this rule, what new products you can sell on Amazon without worrying about inauthentic complaints because those will shut down your account pretty fast. Number two, the Amazon seller app is fine for beginners. There are several third-party apps, and the main benefit of these third-party apps is that they usually are gonna have a downloadable database. It allows you to quickly scan products with a barcode scanner, perhaps, although your phone probably is fine. And then instead of making a call using data or Wi-Fi, if it exists where you're sourcing, you just use a database your phone has already downloaded and you get your results much faster. And those seconds really do add up. Now I've used the Amazon seller app. I've used Profit Bandit. I've used Scout IQ. I've used Jungle Scout. I've used all of them. And I'm back to using just the Amazon seller app. Now partially that's because of my new business model where I'm not going out and sourcing all these random different things, but mostly because I don't actually need it. Now when I was doing truckloads of books, yes, having a database was absolutely necessary. Saving five seconds per book when you're scanning thousands and thousands and thousands of books a day yeah that's important but if you're going to a thrift store and you're going to scan 55 things is it really worth the money you're spending for most people especially beginners i would say the amazon seller app is fine and not having a scanner not having an app on your phone is not justification to not start next up be prepared to get scammed by customers i'm sorry it happened it's what we call a cost of doing business. It really sucks that Amazon is almost always going to side on the side of the buyer as opposed to you, the seller, but that's the way it is. People who have brick and mortar stores, they get robbed. People who do garage sales, they get robbed. I don't know if you've noticed, but there are bad people out there. I know it sucks. Again, this is not the kind of thing that should stop you from pursuing an Amazon business, but it is going to happen. So when it does happen, don't have a total meltdown. Just say, okay. <sighs> Deep breath, bad people suck, time to move on. Next up, you wanna make sure you're following all the rules and regulations about how items should be packed or shipped, when they can be shipped. And this is gonna trip up a lot of people because in the example of like meltable chocolate in July, of course the FBA prices are crazy good. Why? Because nobody's doing it because it's gonna melt. Even if you merge and fulfill that stuff, you're gonna have to put ice packs in there. And as someone who previously had a candy business, that gets expensive very fast. The size packaging can be for FBA, the size of your label, all these things where if you don't follow them, you might be charged fees additionally. Next up, and I wanna leave you with this, Amazon FBA is not nearly as hands-off as some people might make you believe it is. It's not passive income. Now, yes, you're gonna make sales without shipping inventory, and that's passive in a sense, but it's not dividends. I have seen so many shady YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, insert whatever ads saying it's passive income. Just give me 5,000 bucks and I'll set up your store and it's gonna be automatic for Walmart, Amazon, eBay, Shopify. An Amazon business requires planning, requires management, requires all of the stuff that any other business will require. Yes, you can find Amazon prep centers. You can find reverse logistics centers who will prep your items and take your returns, but they're mostly dealing with pallet on the minimum and probably truckload or less than truckload shipments. For a beginner, you're probably gonna have to have a lot of hands-on stuff. So be prepared to, again, manage and plan your business the way you would any other way. My name is Blake. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment below with what tips I missed because I know you people out there love to say what I didn't talk about. And read the comments if you're new because maybe it's good advice. Give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys later.